1424 once again with NASCAR 08. And in this episode of our season with David Rudman's Double Zero Burger King Toyota Camry, we are going to be completing race 7 of 36, which is going to take place at Texas Motor Speedway for the Samsung 500. In the last episode, we raced at Martinsville Speedway, which we finished in 6th place in. I think we could have gotten a top 5, but the car was not in the mood for racing. It was more in the mood for the banana slipping and the sliding that is this game's existence. Ken Trader won that race. Tony Stewart almost won that race, but Ken Trader had just such a fantastic car at the end of the race, and no one could compete with him. I kept trying to catch him, but once the tire wear came in, I couldn't even accomplish keeping the second place or third place or anything. And I kept getting run over on restarts. It was hectic. I think the beginning of the race was going fine because I kept passing cars, but I guess that was practically a given. Now, Texas is technically on my home track, and hopefully we have some decent racing there because it's been a while since racing has actually been legitimate, in my opinion, in this game. Now, maybe this time I can actually win in the Burger King car again, because that did not happen at Martinsville. Tony Stewart is going to be starting on the pole for, like, the fifth time this season, I think. And we've got Kyle Busch in second right next to him, Ryan Newman third, Jeff Green fourth, Matt Kenseth fifth, David Gillen in sixth, Scott Riggs seventh, Dale Jarrett eighth, Sterling Marlin ninth, and Ken Schrader is in tenth. Let me guess, Dale Jarrett's going to wind up finishing in like 29th or something like that again because every time he starts well, they make him start in the back of the field. I would love to know what happened if he starts in the back of the field if he'd actually start making up positions because that happens to a lot of people. Where's my teammate? Michael Waltrip is in 12th place. Okay, they're probably both going to finish horribly. Maybe Michael Waltrip will do well. He usually does well whenever he starts well. Sometimes he doesn't. So we're going to be finally in the regular cars again. We've been in the car of tomorrow for the past couple of episodes. Nice to be in these things again. I spun the tires on the start of the race because I mean, I'm trying to go as fast as everybody else is. I mean, it's like they can go full throttle, but I can't. We're going to get underneath Reed Sorensen right here as we go into turn one. So we're underway for 26 laps. The fastest lap of this track is set by Brian Vickers with like a 27.5, I think. That was what I just read on the loading screen. If you ask me, I, I don't recall a 27.5 being a lap time I could actually ever reach out of Texas. Maybe I'm wrong. So this is the older version of Texas, even though it looks rather new with the darkness of the pavement. But, um, yeah, our first lap time was a 36, uh, 33.6, but we just started the race, so we're about to find out exactly what a decent lap time this track is. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get a 27.5. Maybe my memories of this track are just not that good. Okay, everybody just hit the brakes down the back stretch, and the outside lane is getting kind of a run. Um, trying to go up into Kyle Petty, made a little sparks right there as we make our way into 33rd place off of turn 4. Okay, yeah, so a 27.5, I was correct. That's, uh, that's a little insane. That's a whole, um, three seconds that I can not achieve. Like, I, I cannot imagine my car being that fast. Um, okay. He rubbed his ass up against my face and then he made a hard right turn for the outside wall. I don't like you anyway, John Wood. Okay, what was the outcome of this? That was kind of pretty. Yay, now we have another restart. I don't know how this is going to go. I didn't plan that whatsoever. That just, that just totally freaking happened. I don't, I don't know what the hell that was. Now i got to get out of third gear. Why are we in third gear again? I mean second gear. I'm trying to say second gear, but I'm saying third gear. Because I want to be in third gear. Everybody got a better restart than I do because they don't have to worry about wheel spin. Ah. Uh, Kamikaze Games doesn't have bad restarts and starts and crap. Is that because of his assist or what? Whenever he plays this game, he always just passes everybody on restart. Whenever I play this game, I always wind up spinning my tires and losing a bunch of time. I'm gonna fucking kill you, John Wood. I'm sick of your shit. Get... I'm trying to get off of him. I'm trying to get him to just go away and leave me alone. Piece of shit. Ugh. Driving me nuts. Rubbing his ass up against my face no matter where my face is. I could be in the lead and he'll be rubbing his ass up against my face to lap down. I'm telling you. That is the story of John Wood and the stupid damn Heinz ketchup. You won't leave me alone. And Burton King, you need to sign a, a new contract and catch up because this ain't right. I can't take this shit. Oh, I love this paint scheme. My car won't turn. Okay, so we'll just drive into freaking Bobby Labonte. I don't know what's going on. I mean, my car, I'm blowing slowing down off the gas going to the corners my car just keeps going straight I feel like I'm turning my car is just doing the same thing it was before 
They don't have problems avoiding hitting people in the front stretch, but in the corners, the car is ignorant. This car has always been ignorant. I gotta drop the wedge at every single damn racetrack for this car to comply. I drive like shit, and I'm a horrible racer right now. Yeah, it's a horrible thing because, you know, it's a video game, and I'm totally getting so much disrespect from my audience for this one. Uh, let's just leave it in the dust. I like that Cheerios car. I like Bobby Labonte. But golly, this car wants me to wreck everybody. I thought I might issue the John Wood, but golly, this car won't quit. It's 13 car, Joe Nemechek, has been starting up front many times. Now he's not doing that in this race. That's something I'm noticing. There's Robbie Gordon, who was doing quite well in the points at first, and now he's back here in 27th. So we're in 26th, and I'm trying to still make passes, and everybody keeps blocking me off the gas so I get the car to turn the corner. It's not wanting to. It's a tight race car. I mean, many of the reason is probably because it's David Ruderman's car. It's not some... Jeff Gordon car, or Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart, perfect race car that is absolutely on point in terms of steering and everything, speed. That's something that we had turned on whenever we went to the uh, first race of the season, whenever we started season mode, you had the option for driver attributes, which makes the cars different in terms of performance, based on how they actually perform in reality, I suppose. And even then, we got drivers like Jeff Gordon with an amazing car who's just performing like crap every race, and I don't know why. And the same thing with Dylan R. Jr. Uh, there's a red dot on my map all laid down back in last place. That's probably John Wood, I would assume it was, because he went crashing to the outside wall again whenever my car did not want to get off of him. Uh, that is, car didn't want to get off of me. Uh, so we're in 19th. Jeff Burton is... We're bump drafting Jeff Burton. I don't want to bump draft Jeff Burton. So there's like an Irwin Tools car, and then there's just an Irwin car, and I like the Irwin car, the one that's gray and blue, and then he's got the Irwin Tools car, which is like a, a blue slash purple and yellow car. I don't like that car. I hate that car. So, Michael Waltrip is in 13th place right now. I think he started 12th, right? So he's not doing that well. You passing him on the inside is probably going to cause other people to get underneath him as well, so... I kind of feel bad for him. I see Jeff Burton making a pass on him right now. I don't know how long he's been stuck on the outside. I should give him a draft so they can get out from there, but it's not working. Some gap between Michael Waltrip and the rest of the field, but we close that really quickly through turn three. Oh my god, Jeff Burton, where the hell did you come from? Wow, everybody's slowing down in the front stretch. I don't know what that was going on. We got people boosting behind me, and then you got people slowing down in front of me. Huh? What the heck? <laughs> You got people going forward and backward and forward and backward. What, what is this? Is this some new kind of rubber banding technology I've not been introduced to until now? I don't know what's going on. I'm just holding down the throttle and turning left. Everybody else is they're going forward and backward. So, now we're making our way into the top ten. Why is my car driving onto the apron? I don't want to be on the apron. First, this car don't want to turn. Then it's turning onto the apron like it can turn as much as I ever want it to. More than I want it to. Okay, we're going to pass Matt Kenseth right here going into turn one and finally get into the top ten. Who's in the lead? Kyle Busch is in the lead. Tony Stewart has been falling back quite a bit. He's almost about to lose his top five. Well, I guess that's a little different than usual. The only time he's not in the lead is whenever I bring out a caution before pit stops or something. or Well, whenever pit stops happen in general. Apparently he loses time because of his pit crew not being good enough. I think we'll find our way into the top five four pit stops begin this time because we are a little group together. I see them three wide behind me. Well, they were for a bit. So Matt Kenseth kind of flipping out. And I overdrive turn one because I'm too busy looking at my mirror. It's darn controller sensitivity. I'm probably not all the way down the X button like I should be. Yeah, we're getting low on fuel, so I'm not exactly sure about this whole top five thing. Ah, my car is so damn tight. It says the tires are not warm, but look what the car's doing. I got off the gas so I could make the corner, but no, I didn't make the corner whatsoever. And Scott Riggs is trying to block me. I'm going to let off the gas a little bit more here and there in the middle of the corner just to keep it at the bottom. That should help. It's helping us keep up with them because we're at the bottom, I suppose. Ah, golly. What do I have to do to get my car to turn? Seven now, and people are going down pit road. 
we're automatically going to be in the top five before we pit, but I was hoping that we'd get there before pit stops began for everybody. And, well, there goes the rubber banding again. I mean, you got people speeding past me in the front stretch like their cars are even more powerful. I'm not trying to get underneath you. You're just driving slow in the corner, damn it. Uh, winner of the previous race, Ken Schrader. They're all going down pit road. Uh, I'm going to see if I can lead a lap. I don't know if it's possible. Is anybody going to be staying out another lap? I think Kyle Busch. Nope, just one guy staying out. That would be... Clint Boyer. At first I thought it was Ryan Newman, but I'm trying to look at the, uh, the track map. These people coming off pit road. If I had gone in, I'd have better tires, tire wear for the remainder of the race. There's no such thing as tire wears. Yeah, it's not possible to catch Clint Boyer from here, so this was just a waste. I should have gone down pit road with everybody else because that would have been the smart thing to do. I guess Clint Boyer just wanted to lead a lap because he knew it would be possible to do it. He's got a huge lead. He might still have that lead after pit road. I'm not sure. Okay, come on, slow the car down. So 70. Okay, we're good. Uh, four tires, full tank of fuel. We'll repair the damage because slammed into John Wood. I think a little bit to a few other drivers because my car just did not want to turn in some situations. So we could probably use this. You'll beat out the dents. I could use that. Uh, let me look at this stuff. Fastest lap was set by Clint Boyer, and he was in the lead, so Clint Moyer, 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 Tom Sawyer might just be our competition for this race, because there's no such thing as Clint Boyer. I can't say his name, right? We're in fifth with a 30.15, right behind Juan Pablo Montoya, and things are changing big time because of the drivers getting back on the track with fresh tires, and the rubber banding is gaining them time. I'm trying to get back on the throttle and get back on the track and everything up to speed, but my car just wants to spin its tires instead. Oh my god, we are going to do absolutely freaking horrible in this race, and I don't even know why. Okay, the car just drove right up on the track and cut off Jeff Burton. I was trying to stay on the apron. Sterling Marlin is in the lead right now. Never mind, Tony Stewart is in the lead right now. Uh, what the hell, why are you... Okay. You... Uh, okay, I wasn't even... I really don't know what the hell's going on sometimes. You're going so slow that you're letting me underneath you, and I have nowhere to go, because I wouldn't just get off the gas for no damn reason and slow down. Ten miles per hour in the middle of the corner. I'm trying to get off of Jeff Gordon, but he's not giving me any room. He let me underneath him, but then he just gave me enough room so I could dump him and not do anything else. I can't explain how stupid that was. Like, I, it's so many levels of... I would love for it to have just been my fault, but I can't take the blame because it didn't feel like it was my fault. Maybe it looked like it was my fault, but oh my god, that was so stupid. Oh, well, we're all packed together again. We're closer than we were before, so I guess I get a benefit from that. Why do we always have to have cautions and stupid crap that looks like it's my fault? Why can't this game stop incriminating me? I, I, I. And they're all getting out of my way. Jeff Gordon's probably pissed off because he was driving so slow a while ago for no reason. I don't know why they were driving so slow. So how fast I was going, they were already on the track. I don't, I don't get it. Drive faster. But not too fast. Like, drive as fast as I do, because I drive as fast as I possibly can. I don't understand this AI whatsoever. Uh, in, in, in general, this is better AI than I could probably get in NASCAR 14 and maybe even NASCAR 15. I think NASCAR E2's AI are way better than they are in this game. Astro 9 is uh, starting to look a little bit better in this game right now. But I like this game's physics engine a little bit more than Astro 9 because it requires you to actually slow down the car in some circumstances. I don't like the whole full file nonsense in Astro 9. What the hell? He, he, he rubbed the ass on my face and that affected me. Why do I always have these stupid issues? That don't make sense. Why can't we have logic, bro? Why can't we have logic for once in this damn game? Kamikaze games, help me. I I can't. I'm sick of everything that just don't make any sense. Ugh! Wow, this race is um rather close to the end than I thought it would be. We're already on lap 20, and it's only a 26-lap race. Well, Dale Jarrett's still doing very well. I thought he'd be in, like, 20th place right now. But no, he's uh in 12th. Well, he was in 12th. Now he's... Losing one of those positions. Will you turn? This is the front stretch. You can turn the car in the front stretch. I didn't drop the wedge. I wanted to drop the wedge, but I didn't drop the wedge. Well, he was in 11th. He, he fell back to 12th because Palminar was on the inside. 
I am so freaking confused by the commentary that I try to present. Turn the car. Turn the car. That is such a hard feat to accomplish. Uh, um, okay, we'll just go to the outside of the racetrack off turn four for no reason. Let's see if we can get ourselves a top ten out of this. I think that's very possible. Probably wind up wrecking another car before the end of this damn race. Uh, I'm driving along the apron. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna push Paul and Hart right here. Well, Scott Riggs is gonna pull up in front of him, so we're just gonna slingshot instead. I'm trying to turn, but my car doesn't do that thing. That, that my car's not very big on the whole turning situation. I wish I had dropped the wedge, but I never remember to do anything that I say that I want to do on pit road. I never remember a fucking thing. Ah, uh, uh, I'm my own worst enemy. Okay, so we got into the top ten. Tony Stewart's on the inside, so he can still make up positions. Probably sound like the stupidest thing ever, but I want there to be some hope that any driver can possibly be in competition with me in the point standing. So I would like to help Tony Stewart make up some positions and get more points if he's going to finish in front of me. I think we can finish in front of him, but if that's not possible, I just want him to still finish way up front in the field. I don't know. He's my driver. He's my favorite driver. I don't want my main competition to be gone. I'm struggling just to pass one car right now because my car gets tight every single time I go into a corner. It looked like it was worse than it was before. Maybe it's just because we're racing the leaders and I have to drive faster to get around them. Uh, oh god, why y'all driving so slow into turn three? Okay, are you gonna hey, give me a room? Yay. Who's the leader right now? Clint Boyer is still the leader. Like I said, he was really dumb once everybody got off the track and out of his way. And he's still really fast. Jeff Green could possibly pass him and win this race. That would satisfy Comic Eyes Games knowing. But he's going to the outside, apparently, to block someone that doesn't have a run. That's always smart. This car's still in good condition, if you ask me. Except for the right side, I guess. I think it's easier to pass people if you bump draft them all over the track, but. Yeah. And Tony Stewart's going to my outside. White flag is out. We got one lap to go here at Texas, and I'm in the top five. I kind of thought the top ten would be the limit. I didn't really think top five was possible. Uh, okay, we made the corner. For a second, I thought we weren't going to. I don't like Clint Boyer. Jeff Green, you go win this race, please. Come on, come on. Give him the draft. Give him the draft. Get underneath him. Yes. Damn it. Well, it's too late now. I tried. I, I failed. Uh, okay, well, looks like Elliot Sadler was able to do it, though. Well, he almost got underneath Jeff Green, at least. So, we got fourth place. Got a top five. Those were some good results right there. I kind of wanted to help Tony Stewart because he'd be my best bet for a driver to work my way through the field in the last few laps. But we finished in front of him, so we're going to pull even more in the points lead. Clint Boyer started in 11th place and finished in first. He led six laps in this race. Jeff Green started in fourth and finished in second. He led four laps in this race. Clint Boyer actually led the most laps by leading six laps. That's kind of ridiculous because that's not very many laps. Elliot Sadler started 18th and finished in third. David Rudeman, us, started 43rd and finished in fourth. Mark Martin started 15th and finished in fifth. Tony Stewart started on pole and finished in sixth. He led two laps in this one. Uh, Kyle Busch, I guess Kyle Busch, started second and finished in seventh. He also led six laps, giving him a tie for the most laps led. Matt Kinseth started in fifth and finished in eighth. He led five laps. Sterling Marlin started ninth and finished in ninth, led two laps. And Scott Riggs started seventh and finished in tenth. So, we had quite a lot of people leading laps. We had a lot of lead changes, 13, within just 26 laps. So, half this race had a different leader every lap. And then, uh, Ryan Newman led one in here after starting third and finished 11th. Our teammates actually both did decently for once. I was kind of hoping that would happen, but it never does, and it did this time. Dale Jarrett started 8th, finished 13th. Michael Waltrip started 12th, finished 14th. And, uh, well, David Gillen started 6th, finished 21st. I guess that's not surprising because he's not supposed to be that good of a driver anyhow. And you can look through the rest of these race results. Jeff Burton started 19th, finishing 43rd. And he only ran 25 laps in this race. That's right, we actually saw him on the apron, but I didn't acknowledge it. I noticed it, though. Yeah, Jeff Burton, he, um, he was about to go down pit road with a few to go. Oh my god! It happened again! You stupid game! Will you ever let me 
go view the highlight reel so I can make a thumbnail instead of having nothing to work with. You stupid menus. I try so hard to just press this button down one time. You press it down one time, this thing goes down like three million times. I am still in the points lead, 122 points in front of Tony Stewart. Kyle Busch is in third, 151 points back. Bobby Labonte is in fourth, 296 points back. Robbie Gordon is in fifth, 325 back. My teammate Michael Walter moved from 8th to 6th in that race. He is 332 back. J.J. Yilly is in 7th, 345 back. Jimmy Johnson, 8th, 357 back. Jeff Green, 9th, 358 back. And Elliot Sadler is in 10th, 375 back. Uh, so much distances back. Big numbers. It should not be this big of numbers just, what, six races into the season? It, it ain't right. John Wood is not in the top 10 anymore. That makes me horny. Uh, you can look through the rest of the point standings. Blah bitty blah bitty blur bitty blur. Dellen Art Jr. is in 23rd place in the point standings because this game is retarded. Uh, where's Jeff Gordon? Have I seen Jeff Gordon or did I just... Jeff Gordon is in 38th place right now. My teammate Del Jarrett is doing better than Jeff Gordon. Yay. I mean, I'm not helping Jeff Gordon by dumping him. I mean, that was all his fault anyhow. I'm not taking the blame for that bullcrap. I can't take blame for any of this stupid crap this game offers me. In the next episode, which is going to come out next week, we are going to Phoenix International Raceway for the Subway Fresh Fit 500, race 8 of 36. I wanted to mention that's going to come out on Tuesday. At first, I didn't remember what day it was going to come out on. Uh, I'm starting to get a pet peeve with this game and how, how many times it inflicts these weird wrecks and puts me in situations where I can't avoid dumping people. At least I dumped John Wood. That's fantastic. After NASCAR 09, I want to dump John Wood in every fucking race. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.